What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com, back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial for you. So today we're going to talk about a couple different ways to add background images to your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so usually when you're, when you're going to use this is when you're trying to make a model look a little bit more realistic. Like for example, I've got this house model that I downloaded from the 3D warehouse. And I'm not sure if it's... Uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, but this is a house from Quebec. It's Mason Fendall by Rod Amato. Um, you can download that from the 3D warehouse, but that's basically just a house that I downloaded as an example. But a lot of the time what you're going to want is you're going to want um, something like an image from the front here. You want to have a background with like sky or mountains or kind of a landscape in the background to give this a little bit more kind of geographical context, that kind of thing. And so um, there's a couple different ways that you can do this and I just want to walk you through a few of them. So the first and probably the easiest way to do this would be to just come in here and just on the back, in the background of your image just like this, or in the background of your model, to uh, come in here and basically draw a big face, just like this. So just come in here and draw a face. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to basically apply an image to that. So I have a texture that I'm gonna use. It's basically just a sky, and I'm gonna use that as my um, example. But basically, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna find my image um, in this case, I have my sky image. I'm going to import it as a texture. So select your image, select texture, and then click import. And what that's going to allow you to do is that's going to allow you to come in here and add this image as a texture onto this face. So that's probably the easiest way to do something like this is just to come in here and, um, and basically draw this sky in on a flat face just like this. And so if you're just looking for like a single image just like this, no other camera views or anything like this, this is probably the simplest, easiest way to do this. So like I could come in here and I'm gonna go ahead and make a scene out of this. But basically you've got a house and you've got your sky in the background and you could come in here and add some trees and other stuff to kind of blend this together a little bit. But that's the quickest, easiest way to do this. The, the issue with this is it's not very good for multiple camera angles. So like if I come in here and I rotate my camera like pretty much at all, you can see how this image only lasts to like the edges of my view right here. So it's very limited. Um, so I'm basically limited. I can't look up very high. I mean, I could make this wider and all of that, definitely. So like I could come in here and I could definitely like widen this image out and you'd probably have to do some like texture repositioning type stuff and that kind of thing. But you could definitely do that. But it's just not very good for kind of moving your image around. I mean, I could definitely come in here and adjust this using the position texture tools to make it bigger, you know, and that would allow me to kind of rotate around a little bit more, but you can see how you're just, it's, it's basically good for one view. So, but if that's all you need, then this is the easiest way to do this. So the second way that you could do this is you could come in here and instead of doing it this way, um, and I'm just gonna kind of group these and hide them, but instead of doing it that way, if you want something that's always going to be behind your model, what you can do is you can add a watermark. So that's the second way to add a background to your model is to come into your styles and add a watermark. And a watermark is basically an image that SketchUp takes and it puts either in front of or behind your image no matter what your camera angle is. So what you do is you'd come over here to your styles section in your tray um, and if you don't see your tray, you go to window, default tray, and make sure show tray is checked. Also make sure this styles box is checked. Um, that, that ought to make this show up in here. But what you're going to do is you're going to go, it's probably going to show up and it's going to look something like this when you first get here. So this is your active style and all that. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to go to this edit tab and you're going to go to this fourth box which is watermark settings. And you wanna make sure this box is checked right here for display watermarks, but what you can do is you can come down here to this plus sign, and you can click on that, and you can add an image as a watermark. So I can come in here and I can click add, or click OK with the image that I want. First thing it's gonna ask you is if you want this to be an overlay or a background. In this case, we want it to be a background. So you can see how now this puts it behind all the geometry in our model. Now we're gonna click next, 
and it'll allow you to kind of adjust how like transparent that image is so in this case we just want it to be all the way over here to image for right now and you can come back and adjust this later and that's just going to adjust how this blends in here so we're going to click next again and then it's going to give you several several different options in here so it's going to give you options for how you want this displayed and we want to select this first box which is stretched to fit the screen and uh, if you Right now what this is going to do is this is going to lock in the aspect ratio of your image, meaning it's going to put this image back here, but it's not going to fill the whole screen um, because it's locking, it's trying to not distort your image by stretching it. In this case, we're going to go ahead and uncheck that box, and you can see how that may create a little bit of distortion, but it also takes your image and puts it all the way across the background here. And then I'm going to click finish, and so now you can see what that does is no matter where I'm at in my model just like this it's gonna put that image behind you or behind your model so you can come in here and you can adjust the way that you're looking at your house you can move it up and down that kind of thing and uh, this is always gonna be behind your image so you know that's definitely an option to come in here and add a sky or a background really fast is by doing something like that. So you can definitely do that. For me, I find that it, it gets a little hard to kind of make this look natural, um, depending on how you're doing this. So I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of doing it this way. Where I am a big fan of doing it this way though is when you're dealing with an interior model. So, and this is an interior model that I've downloaded from the 3D warehouse. And uh, this model is, there we go, it's just Living Room by Soup Dog. So you can find that in the 3D warehouse, but it's basically an interior model, just like this. So if I kind of look around, um, it's basically just a modeled interior with kind of a hole in the end here for your camera. But it's basically a living room in here with some windows. And so where this is good is you can come in here and add this image as a watermark in the background and I've gone, gone ahead and added that but you can see how now you can kind of see that through your windows and I turn the ground plane on um, by coming over here and checking the box for ground and I turn the sky off but you can see how this is a really good way to come in here and just kind of add a sky or a background through your windows. So this is good for interiors. Um, it's a real quick, easy way to just kind of throw that watermark in the background and you can basically call it good from there. You can see how you may have to adjust this up and down a little bit and all of that, but it's a real quick way to get that background through your windows if you're dealing with an interior. So the third way to do this is to come in here and uh, model kind of a cylindrical background um, around your object. So like for example, if I was to come in here and I was to draw like a giant cylinder, kind of like this, and then push pull it up and then delete the top out, what that would do is that would create kind of uh, basically this piece, this panoramic piece of geometry right here that would basically surround my house model. So you can see how if I come in here, I kind of set my camera up and I look around, what that's going to do is that's going to be all the way around my model. Well, then what I can do is I can come in here and I can apply my sky material to it. But that gets a little bit tricky, and here's why. So what you can do with this is you can bring your image in as a texture just like this, but you kind of have to be careful the way that it comes in here. Because if you bring this in um, using the import texture like we did before, um, you can see how this only applies this to a single face and what you can do is you can use the eyedropper in your materials section to select that material and then apply it to the rest of your image but you can see how what that does is that's repeating that's repeating this texture but it's not repeating it it's repeating it too many times and so it doesn't look very realistic so and sometimes if you bring this in it'll also like if I triple click on this for example you can see how this uh, this cylinder is basically made up of a whole bunch of flat faces. Sometimes it'll bring this in and it'll just kind of tile this across your faces just like this and it won't look very realistic. So what you end up having to do for something like this is I would come over here and I would draw a face as kind of like a canvas to work on my texture and then I would kind of make it kind of longer just like this and so I would take this face and I would apply this texture to that face just like this. So kind of the same way, import images texture, click import, 
and then you would click this across just like this. So what you can do is you can use this canvas that you created to come in here, kind of adjust your image. Like for example, um, you can see if I make this wider, just like this, then it starts tiling this uh, texture. So what you can do is you can come in here to the texture edit. So you can right click on this, click texture and click position. And you can adjust the size of your texture by dragging these little pins on this face. So I could adjust this to kind of make it work then come in here and click done. Well then what I could do is I can right click on this on texture and I can click projected. And when I select projected, what that means is that's gonna take this image and it's gonna project it along this curved face just like this. So, and then what I can do is I can sample the material and then come over here and click on this. And you can see how what that's doing is that's taking that sky image and it's kind of projecting it along the edge there. And you can see how you're getting a little bit of distortion in here um, along the edges because basically it's taking this and it's projecting it along these faces all the way along here, just like this. So you have to be a little careful in the way that you do this. So, but basically what you can do now is you can come in here and this gives you a lot more options for kind of like looking around um, in this panorama. And you do still have to be a little careful. You can't come over here and look at this side because you've got a little bit of distortion, but the sky is okay in the background. And so the plus about this is if you come in here and you render this, then what's gonna happen is the background will still reflect off of these faces and all of that, so it'll look pretty realistic. And the other thing you have to be a little careful about is you have to make sure that you're kinda like base, that your ground plane is big enough that you don't have any obvious gaps in here. So all you really have to do with that, if it's a texture, is just come in here and just kinda make this a little bit bigger by moving these, um, moving these lines to kind of grow the thing just like this. So, you know, just make sure those are big enough. Well, then you can come in here and you can set up your camera view. And you can see how this gives you a lot more options to kind of look around and that kind of thing. And the other nice thing about this is you can also, since we made that image so much bigger, you can move this up on the blue axis to make it taller and it's just gonna pick up the rest of that texture just like this. And so now you can come in here and you can look around at your sky and all of that. And I think it's just more realistic than having the flat piece on there as well. So that's the third way to come in here and do this. And then the fourth way to do this is to come in here. I'm gonna put these in a group and hide them. The fourth way to do this is to come in here and add what's called a sky dome. And so, what a sky dome is, is it's basically a dome with a sky material applied to it that goes all the way over your model. So if you go into the 3D warehouse and search for sky dome, um, in this case, I'm going to bring in, I think this PJ sky dome is a good one, but you can click on that and then you can download that into your model. So go ahead and click yes and give it a minute. So you can just kind of place that over your model, just like this. And you can see how basically what that is, is that's like a full on sky. So it's like a 360 degree sky. So you can see how it's all the way over my model. Well now if I kind of fly in here with my camera, and this may take just a second, but now if I fly in here with my camera and I look around, like that gives me a sky all the way around my model just like this. So if I look up, there's sky above my object, there's sky kind of everywhere. So this is probably the best way to get like the full 360 degree sky in here. Um, I don't necessarily like this image so much. You can come in here and you can select that material of the sky and kind of brighten it up using the color wheel just like this if you want kind of a brighter object. but or a brighter sky. So that's probably the best way to get a sky all the way around your object. The trick with that though is that requires some kind of UV mapping because the texture doesn't necessarily map quite right um, with the default texture tools in SketchUp. So it can be complicated to create those. Um, but there are several of them in the 3D warehouse that you can download. There's probably some others online. I haven't gone looking for them but you can definitely down those and bring those into your model as well. So they all have a little bit of pluses, a little bit of minuses, but they all kind of um, 
give you a different set of options or what you want to do. So that's where I'm going to end today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did I forget anything? Um, have you been using any of this stuff? I just love having that sketch up conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new sketch up content every week. If you like what I'm doing on my channel, please consider visiting my support me page on my website. That's the sketchupessentials.com slash support. Um, that's got everything from extensions you can purchase to support the show to links to my Patreon page. Um, but in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.